This is gonna be a room about uh, Ayatollah Bourbe and his grandson Mohsen Bourbe. He himself, not only the grandson of Bourbe, is also a son of Ayatollah. Ayatollah Bourbe was uh, one of the top Shia scholars of his time in Iran. He was one of, was one of few scholars that reached the level of uh, Mushtahid, and he became a marja meaning that it was it was permission permissible for Shias to emulate him and follow him follow him in both fiqh and aqidah. But during he, when he was in his forties, he decided to write a book about uh, write a book a tafsir of the Quran. And while studying the Quran he came to the conclusion that Shiism as it's practiced today in Iran was contradictory to the Quran. So he set out on a quest to cleanse Shiism from innovation and superstition, Khurafat, Shirk, Bidah, Alhamdulillah, which caused eventually him to be martyred in the 90s. And during his jihad, his jihad with a pen, he authored many books. When he was a Shia, he authored about 30 books in defense of Shiism. And when he left, he wrote 40 books in refutation of his own books. And not only that, he's the first Iranian to translate the book Min Hajjah Sunnah by Ibn Taymiyyah. If you go and look in the chat, okay, now he isn't here, but if you look at Avenue when he comes up, that's the picture of the Farsi translation by Ayatollah Burqi of Min Hajjah Sunnah. And Ayatollah Burqi, when I was a Shia, they told me it didn't exist. They, they couldn't, because back then, it was early in the internet, there were few pictures available of him and few audio recordings. So they basically said he never existed. But now, alhamdulillah, thanks to the internet, and thanks to Mohsen, the grandson of Borghi, sharing in images and lectures and videos of Ayatollah Borghi, uh, no one can no longer deny his existence. If you go today on Shia forum, in like the old threads, you will see that he... They, they completely deny his existence. They say he doesn't exist. He's a Salafi fairy tale. And mm. as a Shia, when I used to be Shia, I also believed in this actually. I thought he was a fairy tale until I asked a family member. I said, yes, Ayatollah Burqi existed. And they even showed me his books. They had his books, my family. One of them being the one that Uzeil has on his picture. That big book is Sabone Ayyom. The autobiography of Ayatollah Borbey. So, inshallah, if everyone is ready, we will inshallah start soon. Please, Ahi, go ahead if everything is ready, please, Lam. I did mention earlier that I can't talk, so inshallah, I can't talk. Go on, Ahi. Ustad Hassan, the floor is yours, Ahi. From here on, you can take on and have a discussion with Aki, Aki Ponson. Conduct the interview, inshallah. Mm -hmm. The floor is yours. Are you starting for talking about? Who's going to uh, represent? Our elder. Bashibas. Bashibas. Our, our elder Mohsen should speak first, right? No, you, you begin. Everybody in the room. Alhamdulillah. Um, I'm very happy to be with you guys in the room. And very interesting, some interesting points that Brother Amir, may Allah preserve him, may Allah safeguard him. 
deserve him sounds like he's some sort of pickles or something. Torshi. You like Torshi Amir? I love Torshi. And uh, Amir mentioned some interesting things. <laughs> I'm going to Adam Skersi then, Torshi. <laughs> I've been mentioning some interesting things that, and he's much younger than myself. I turned recently 38. So I'm, I'm, I'm from a generation where, you know, just like a few years after I left the religion of Imamism, Rafidism, just a few years after YouTube launched and the Dawah, you know, started really, yeah, like on, 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 on the internet really. And then later came social media, of course. And I also remember these, um, these threads on uh, Shia chat and on other Shia forums, or mainly Shia chat, because that's the only real main Shia forum. But they, till today, they discuss that. That was like different stages. First, they denied completely the existence of Burqai and any person who becomes, <laughs> and any person who from Sunni, uh, who, from, uh, who from a Shia background becomes Sunni. You know, they were, even myself, I used to be a Shia myself one day. I, I, they, we were so brainwashed. We were told there is no such a thing, let alone that there are scholars who became Ahl-Sunnah Sunni. So the initial state was, they completely denied his existence. Then, then came around the Sunni Persian channels, Alhamdulillah. Um, Wasal Farsi, Noor TV, Kalama TV, yeah? Alhamdulillah. And they, they, they broadcasted, because there's audio fights of Ayatollah Burqai, Rahimahullah. Audio fights of him defending Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahimahullah. And then where he says that you have to follow the way of the Salaf, stuff like that, imagine. So they couldn't deny anymore. They couldn't deny that he is he's non-existent and he's, he is uh, from the imagination of the Wahhabis, the Najdis, the Nausibis, the Umayyads. They couldn't, they couldn't say stuff like this. So what did they do? The next tactic was to downplay everything, yeah, to dilute the issue, to say that, well, yeah, he did exist, but he was some random guy. He was a nobody. He was a jahil. And Zindiq Ghazwini, the Zindiq, the heretic, the evil Ayatollah, Ghazwini, Hosseini Ghazwini, the Iranian one. There's, they're all Iranians, both of them, but this is one, he has a TV channel in Iran as well. He, he said in one of his shows that, yeah, he, towards the end of his life, he became a Shia again, and he, because he's buried in a Shia cemetery, like as if in, <laughs> as if in most of Iran, in Qum and Tehran, as if you have Sunni cemeteries, cemeteries for Muslims. Where there are no graves, elevated graves, pictures on the graves, all these khurafat that the Rafaba are known for, and just like the Nasara and the Yahud and and the uh, and the Hindus and other pagans. So yes, you know it was a they 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 first denied him completely, and then they said that yeah he did exist, but he was not that big, and then they said oh he actually came back, and now today what I've realized they basically say that yeah so what he existed and he didn't become really Sunni. Because, you know, he didn't write on his forehead, I am Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah now. <laughs> I always say, Burday became more than Burday was He was not without flaws. He wasn't. He wasn't. You will find amongst all scholars throughout history. But he, he waged a war. He waged a war against the Khurafat of the Rafada and the Sufis, the extremists, extremists amongst the Sufis, grave watchers. He translated the book of Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. You know what that means? The first Persian book translation of Minhaj al-Sunnah in which Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Abu al-Abbas ibn Taymiyyah, the Kurdish, Iranic Kurdish scholar, annihilated Rafidism, was translated by a Persian, Iranian, Qumite from Qum, Iranian former Twelve Shia. Do you know what that means? That itself is, is mind-blowing. And unfortunately, most most, every single of his books has, has not been translated into the English language, unfortunately. Forget about other languages. Let me tell you one thing quickly. Can I, anybody hear my voice? Am I talking to myself? Hello? We, we hear your voice. No, yeah, we, 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 we can let, me you. Tell you, let me tell you a quick anecdote, which is sad, really sad, but at the same time should encourage the listeners. You know, when I used to be a Rafaway, I went to the Iranian, my local Iranian temple. And when I used to go to the Iranian temple, they had a small book section. And there was this book of this clown. Today, you know, even some Shias, educated Shias, they're ashamed of him because his books are so pathetic, so easy to be refuted by even a beginner student of knowledge. I'm talking about Atijani as samawi Muhammad Atijani as samawi the T Tunisian Sufi. He was what he, it's in his name. He's from the heretical Sufi Tijani order. 
you know, these who spin around, they call upon other than Allah. And no, this, no. this Tijani became from Khurafi super Khurafi. So from superstitious Sufi, he became ultra superstitious Rahafadi. Do you know, brothers and sisters, for how much the Iranian Temple Center used to sell his books in various languages back then in 2000 and, uh, 2001 and two, when I still used to be a 12er, for free euros. You know, free euros back then, you couldn't even, at most you could buy a donut kebab. That was, that was the most you could get. <laughs> so they sold his books less than a donut kebab. And do you know, Sunnah Jama'ah, on the other hand, we are muqassirin, and we have committed. You know, the word committed is used when something in a negative sense. We have committed taqsir. It's our fault that the books, not a single book of Allama Burghayi, Allama a true ayatullah. Why do I refer to him as ayatullah? These ayatul shayateen are not ayatullah. They're ayatul khurafat and ayatul zandaqat, ayatul shirk, ayatul bid'ah. He is a real ayatullah, sign of Allah. Just like a flower is a sign of Allah. Just like a child, an innocent little child. Someone who, all of these things are ayatullah. Yeah. But not these zanadiqah. Burqa'i, Abu al-Fadl, Abu al-Fadl al-Burqa'i, Abu al-Fadl al-Burqa'i was a true ayatullah. And not a single of his books has been translated. Some brothers, I know Abu Muslim Khurasani, he's a Persian Afghan brother. He translated over, roughly almost 10 years ago. It's on his YouTube channel. Some parts of the lectures of Burqa'i. But not a single full lecture of him has been translated to up to this very day. As we Iranians say, as the Arabs say, as the Arabs say, this is, this is really, it's, it's sad. But it means there's, there's also something positive. Our opponents and those who have been slumbering and who think that they don't know what's going on. They see some Sufis from Nigeria and from Egypt who from, Ya Badawi, Ya Rifa'i Madad, who used to, you know, um, do kiss graves and worship graves in Nigeria and in Masr, hardcore Sufis. They celebrate that they have some, you know, success in converting them to Ravidism. They don't know that their fortress is crumbling. Guys, I have written numerous articles. High profile Iranian scholars, scholars, Shia scholars, and politicians. They are whining, crying about the spread of so-called Wahhabism in Iran in general, specifically amongst the Arab Ahwazis. So as I always say, you, you're happy because you have some converts in Nigeria and I don't know, in some, some village in, in Thailand and, and some Sufi Khurafis who, who were semi, semi Shias anyway, the Sufis of Muslim. We are taking back, we are taking back our homeland. Your fortress, Iran is crumbling. And we haven't even started the work. Because as I said, 99% of the works, books, of former Shia scholars have not been translated to this very day. In fact, if I mention some other names, Amir can educate you guys now. There were other 12 Shia scholars. Some of them we can, um, some say, oh, why do you call them Sunni? Okay, whatever. They're tw definitely not 12. They completely annihilated the foundations of 12 Islam, starting from Imam to 12 Imam. This Khuraf of 12 Imam, useless. Idol, 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 non-guiding Prophet Imam. All of it. There's nothing to do with the Mahdi, alayhi salam. Of course, we live in the Mahdi. But the Mahdi is not our Mahdi. None of these books, not a single of these books has been translated to this very day. So imagine if we, if these books get translated. And then they talk about Bahawi money, petrol dollar. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind Turkish money. I don't mind Bahawi money. Where's the pipelines? There's no pipelines reaching my house so far. Not yet. I don't think they will be ever. And as soon as they don't support each other, really. Fortunately. Except the Rahim Arabu. Some. And in few okay, occasions. But that needs to be done, inshallah. So that um, Burqa is not alone. As I said, Amir, I would, I would like to, for you to mention other from Iran and Iraq. I think there was one, I forgot his name. Saran Jili. There was another son in Iraq. His name yeah, was we have name. Ayatollah Saran Jili. Ah, the Imam of the biggest mosque entirety of Iran. Ahsan. He was the Imam of Safar Solar, the Ahsan. biggest mosque at, in the entirety of Iran at the time. And I just want to mention if you look at Avenue's picture, that's the translation of Nihaj Sunnah by Ayatollah mm -hmm. Burqi. Mm -hmm. 
if you guys can see that. And then, okay, Amir John, Amir John, you know what? That's the answer for some of the, in, I say both, shallow Sunnis and shallow Shia, because we have also some shallow Sunnis. Oh, why is he wearing this thing still? Why did you put, is there a picture of him with a turban? What do you want? You want him to shorten his trousers and go and go with some siwak in his hand? I'm not mocking any of this, also my son. But you, the, the people don't understand the context. They don't understand that this man never left Iran. He could not leave Iran anyway. They would not have allowed him. Exactly. It was his students that went to Egypt and brought him these books. Exactly. He didn't have access to them. Exactly. Him dressing like this, even his opinions. Nobody says he was... People don't understand. This man was most of his life a 12 -year. We have scholars of Ahl Sunnah, big scholars, where we differ with in issues of fiqh and to an extent even sometimes issues of Aqidah, don't we? There's Atharis, I'm not I, I, I don't take Aqidah issues from Atharis as scholars. So what? And Babas who are Ash'ari, they, they don't accept Atharis scholars Aqidah, but they take from them also. So Burqi certainly, most certainly had opinions that we don't agree with. And his students as well. Allah Metabu Tabu'i, who is alive, one of his best friends and students right now in Tehran. We don't agree with everything then. And they didn't print, I mean, they didn't ink tattooed I am a Sunni Salafi on their forehead. They don't need to. I say always, Yurqai, Tabu Tabu'i, and all these other, most, and including Ahmad Qasim. And I have differences of opinions with them. With all the differences we have, Wallahi al they are closer to Islam. They are Muslim. They are. They are. Um, they are Muslim. Unlike many, many people who in the name of Sunni do exactly the uh, uh, indulge in the exact same khurafat in the Sheikh Zayd al We are not obsessed with titles. Titles are permissible. Some people fall onto two extremes. Oh, it's not allowed to call yourself Sunni. No, it's allowed. Allah gave titles. Allah. The Sahaba, the leaders of the Muhajir and Ansar, Muhajir, Muhajir, when Ansari, Muhajir, Ansari, these are titles. In Islam, it's not forbidden to call yourself Salafi, Sunni, Atari, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki. It's not fair, it's not uh, haram. It's also not wajib, and you shouldn't carry it with a badge. And Burqi never called himself Sunni. But Burqi has a lecture in defense of Muhammad and Abdul Wahab. Burqi has a lecture where he says in the most clearest form of Farsi, correct understanding of Islam is to follow the Salaf and the Sa'af. And Ahlul Bayt are part of the Salaf. In fact, the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wassalam, they are from the leaders of the Salaf. Because Ali bin Abi Talib is one of the leaders of the Muhajirin. Salaf. But of course, the whole issue we know. Our issue is not Ahlul Bayt. These people always say, Fala Ahlul Bayt, Fala Ahlul Bayt, Skula Fahli Bayt. We know exactly what they mean. When they say, Fala Ahlul Bayt, they mean, follow Kuneni is Zinfir. Fabrici is Zinfir. Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. 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 They want us to follow these Zanadiqa who exaggerated about the Ahlul Bayt. They, they fell into Gulu and made Gulu about the Ahlul Bayt. They attributed Kufriyat and Shirkiyat and Dalalat and Zandaqa to the Ahlul Bayt. They want us to follow these Zanadiqa. No, no, and a billion times no. Never ever will we under accept this Zandaka as a school of Ahlul Bayt. Then we might as well become Hindus and walk over fire, run over fire, and mud bath like Hindus, and self flagellate like medieval Catholics. Yes. Then, okay, then we can accept this. But in the name of Ahlul Bayt, all of this Ghulu? No way. No Aqil, as one brother said. Social media is destroying them, is ruining them, is crippling them. Wallahi, they were relaxing and they were at peace the Shia clergy before the age of the internet and specifically before the age of social media. In this age, people want Tawheed, people want to be God-centric, people want to worship Allah alone, people want to say, okay, Abu Bakr make mistake, Ali make mistake, whatever, okay, khalas. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet, Allah, la ilaha illallah, calling upon Allah alone. There's a masjid, there's no Bakriya, no Umariya, no Husayniya, no, no, no such nonsense. Of course people will accept this quote instead of this Qurafah. Oh, you see them always going into history. And Muawiyah did this, and they did this, as, as if that changes the essence, which the essence is Tawheed. That's why you see how humiliated these people are whenever we talk about Tawheed to them. Huh? When we say to them, can you call upon other than Allah? Yeah, we can't have a soul. Okay, can we say, yeah, Jesus, my dad? Um, um, they know how disgusting it sounds, how despicable it sounds, how heinous it sounds. So, um, yeah, uh, technically, yeah. What kind of religion is this? 
My religion is Islam. My religion is Laila illallah. We are Muslim. We are upon the creed of the Ahl Bayt. We call upon Allah alone like the Ahl Bayt. When we sacrifice, we sacrifice for Allah alone like the Ahl Bayt. When we take an oath, we take an oath in the name of Allah alone like the Ahl Bayt. When we do nazr, we do nazr in the name of Allah alone like the Ahl Bayt and the Sahaba and the Muhajirin and Ansar. Radhi Allahu anhu. Now, as I think should be enough. <laughs> To put some context to, uh, Hassan mentioned Alamat Abu Tabai or Sabt Abu Tabai. That's the guy on Yaqub's picture next to Ayatollah Burbi. Yeah, Mustafa Abu Tabai. Mustafa Abu Tabai. Yes. Yes, and his books have been translated. Three of his books: one in refutation of ISIS, and two books in refutation of Christianity and Judaism. If you go on Amazon and write Mustafa Abu Tabai, they should pop up. Yeah, Mustafa Abu Tabai. Um. Um, Amir John and the listeners and viewers, inshallah, this comes on YouTube as well. You know that most of the time, this Muwahid, this Muwahid, monotheist, he has a beautiful video that I uploaded on one of my Persian YouTube channels. You know what he says in that video? I don't have, sorry, I can't do all this work. We need people, we need a whole team to translate this stuff. You know what he says in one of his videos? In one of his videos, he says, because he's under a lot of pressure, the, some people say, that why doesn't the Iranian government kill all the Sunnis in Iran? All the extras, anyone? They can't. They can't produce martyrs. They are not that stupid. Most Sunni scholars, outspoken Sunni scholars inside Iran, they have been um, assassinated. That's smarter. Car accidents, so-called car, car crashes. You know, yes, they are not that stupid. Your foe, your enemy, is not that stupid. They can't kill uh, Tabu Tabu. Tabu Tabu is a, is a, he is widely respected amongst the Sunni community in Iran and, and amongst these Shia reformists. They don't want to create a, uh, uh, they don't want to turn him into a martyr. And he's of old age. They just wait till he dies. They put him into, under, under house arrest. They do, this, they do this. They even have, to, they've done this with Montazeri, with some of their own people who used to be one of their own. Imagine these Khomeinists, these ideological descendants of the Safawis, these criminal anti Sunni Safawis. That's, that's what they are. That's what these Khomeinists are. They don't have mercy towards the Shia people of Iran. You think the Shia people of Iran, uh, we don't have an issue with them. <laughs> in fact, we say in Farsi, the biggest victims of Shiism, huh? and, and uh, the biggest victim of Shiism slash of the Shia clergy, are the Iranian people, are the majority of the Iranian people, the Shia people of Iran, they have, turned into, they have been turned into Islam haters, into semi-agnostics, ag agnostic, semi-atheists, and so forth. We don't have an issue with the majority or the vast majority of the Shia people of Iran are nice. But, but this ruling class and these extremists, these Khomeinists, who pretend they are not extreme, only the Shiraz is extreme, you know, because they self-flagellate they flagellate themselves with razor blades. And we only do that with chains. <laughs> As if that makes it normal, you know. Both of that is, of course, Hurafat, heresies from medieval Catholic practices that they got from the Portuguese and whatnot, from Europe. From the Italians or the Spanish. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. One, one, one point I wanted to mention, just one point. I have this video of, of uh, Mustafa Tabatawai. It's, it's quite recent. Maybe one, well, not quite recent. One or two years ago, where he says he left his house, and uh, there was a bunch of these Basijis, these you know, this uh, uh, paramilitary military who know them, who annoy him and stuff, and they were saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he responded to them with Ya Allah. And he said to them, well, what's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you people? What's your issue with calling upon Allah alone? You hate it? And basically he lectured them about the superiority of calling upon Allah alone. Just like Ali bin Abi Talib did. Ah, there are this and many other lectures. Many other? Every single lecture of this. And book. Um, here's a book, by the way, Amir. I don't know if you read it. Um, um, has a book, A Refutation of Turbat. Turba, praying on Muhr. Yeah, which the 12 verse, the Imamites, they claim it's 100% proven from Sunni books because in Bukhari there's this one hadith where the Prophet put his head, forehead on mud. <laughs> no, I haven't actually read, actually read. I know that the Shia reformer, reformer has an uh, English short video on the issue. Oh, of maybe, maybe, what is the maybe it's the translation of that. He has a book, a very, uh, sorry, a booklet, a short book, a refutation of Purga. We have at our hands a book in refutation of praying on soil, which is the, the, the 12 verse claim. You're not saying it's haram, but they claim it's wajib, and you have to carry this 
like hockey puck with you. It looks like a hockey puck from ice. Oh no, it looks like it's just in this. He wrote a beautiful short refutation of this. Not in, not it's not been translated. Nothing has translated. We haven't even started the Dawa really. And these people, I'm telling you, back to my story in 2003 when I was in Polish year in my early 20s, they sold the books of the clown, the Tunisian Sufi clown, who yesterday was spinning around and calling upon uh, Rifai and Badawi, yeah, and then started calling about Ahl Bayt. So you place you replace the Sufi sense with the Ahl Bayt. They sold. Is the books of this Tunisian Sufi clown for less than a shawarma, for the price less than a shawarma. Over 20, almost 20 years ago. And we are today here in 2021, and we haven't translated a single book of Sufi. We pray that this, pray that this is a small step towards that. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. That's why I'm saying all these things. That's why, you know, I'm. Ah, I know you're emotional about, about this. Yes, that's why I hope those who listen, those who have the money, those who have the resources and money, they say to themselves, Tayyab Khalas, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a Muslim millionaire. I'm a Pakistani Muslim millionaire. I'm an Arab Muslim millionaire. I'm a Persian Muslim millionaire. I'm an Afghan. Whatever you are. Khalas here. I don't want your money. I don't want you guys to buy me cars. This or nothing. I don't want nothing from you. We don't want nothing. Let's get these books translated. Let's distribute them. Let's make a world tour. Let's go to Indonesia. Let's go to Egypt. Let's go to Nigeria. Let's go to Togo. Let's go to Ghana. Let's go to South Africa. Let's show these people what they have never, what have been concealed. From them, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Ahwaz, Sheikh Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, 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 Allah. Hello, Allah. Hello, Allah. Alhamdulillah, Allah, Habibi, Akhi Karim, Allah. Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah. Anwar, Anwar is also actually, by the way, from Ahwaz. I was early speaking about Ahwaz. Anwar, Baba Anwar, صح ولا لا? Anwar is Anwar. Anwar is one of hundreds of thousands. Of Asia. You know, in London, Anwar, every Ahwazi I met is originally Shia, has become already Sunni. <laughs> Finished. Khalas. Khalas. Intail Mubu'ah. Kasra Sanam. Kasra Sanam. Ahwazi. And now it's going to the Persian city. Al Mu'amameen, yani, uh, that's it, yani. They're finished. Inshallah. Yeah, with one left in the grave, and we do gonna do the rest, inshallah. Keep them in, inshallah. Just yeah. let's uh, start with the interview with the. Uh, Mohsen Burdi, the grandson of Ayatollah Burdi and the son of Ayatollah. Bismillah Hassan. Let's go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah jamian. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Who's going to interview Mohsen? Amir, you interview him no, in English? No, no, you, you, your English is better than mine. Okay. My English is... is okay. Uh, Mohsen John, um, <laughs> so, so for, the, for the listeners and the viewers, Mohsen is the grandson, not the son. He's the grandson of Ayatollah Burqay. So <laughs> there you go, guys. I don't know how they're going to get out of this, you know. Oh, they brought some Wahhabi yeah, who's, who claims to be the grandson of Burqay. <laughs> Mohsen, can you... Um, Mohsen John... Um, no. you, you try in English and I'm going to correct you and help you out. Yes, we try. Uh, we try. Yes, we try. Uh, John, who, well, I, so you're the grandson, you were born in Iran, did you see your grandfather, did you live with your grandfather, did you used to visit yeah. your grandfather? I, I've been t- 13 or 13 years, I mm. moved from my father's house mm-hmm. to uh, a grandfather. Because mm-hmm. the, the family problem. I'm, I'm coming in the, this uh, family. I don't understand. I am there the 30 years, 14, 40, 14 years. I don't understand what is the Shia or Sunna or uh, relations. Uh, okay. Mohsin John. Mohsin John. Shama, very early, very much. I'm going to say, 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 وقتی من آمدم داخل این خانواده پدر بزرگم مادر بزرگم خب من نمیدونستم که دقیقا اینا بحث چیه و اصلا چیه 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 خب پس از این مدت پنج شیش ماهی که گذشت یه چیزا دیدم همش چون منزل ایشون به مسجد چسبیده بود و در okay. اجازه مسجد... بدید اینو ترجمه کنم اجازه بدید so he saying um, محسن is saying that uh, well he's the grandson so when he was raised his, 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 obviously his grandfather Burghi, Abdul Fadl Bogey was already 
He left Imam Mazin was starting refusing it left, right, and center. But he wasn't aware of all of this. He was a kid. He was a child. He grew up in a family. And all he knew is that his, um, there was a mosque where his grandfather, i.e. Abu al-Fatr al-Burqay, was preaching. So that's it. so the, he says that the house of the masjid where Burqa used to preach, remember this is pre-revolution time, during the Shah's time, where Sunnis had some form of freedoms. And he said that... Ah, okay, 27 years, his grandfather, Abu al Burqi, used to preach in this mosque, which was basically attached to the house where Muhsin, his grandson, was, was raised. Oh, that's all right. بعد که من اونجا کم کم بزرگ شدم و این بحثا رو میشیدم و داخل مسجد میرفتم و اینا چه بحثاری رو چه بحثاری رو بحث هایی که خدمت شما از کنم پیامبر نمیتونه علم غیب داشته باشه پیامبر امام ها علم غیب ندارن بعد ولایت تشریعی ولایت تکفینی خمس در اسلام زکات چگونه در اسلام هست نقش امام ها آیا امام ها موجزه داره موجزاتشون موجزه میتونم بکنه همش در نفی نفی این عقایدی بود که اینها با هم بحث میکردن در هم مسجد سخنرانی های هفته دو روز ثابت ایشون سخنرانی داشت چندین ساعت روز پنج شنبه و چندین ساعت روز جمعه استاد علامه برقی خب اجازه بدید so he says that um, um... His grandfather Burqi in this mosque had regular, um, he gave leg- regular speeches, khutbas, and there, of course, uh, Muhsin from early age became familiar with, um, well, the stances of his grandfather. Because his grandfather was obviously standing out. He was someone who previously was known as a Shi'i authority, reached the level of his jihad, wrote books. In defense of 12ism and then started refuting his own books and refuting the essence of imamism. So anyway, in a nutshell, um, Muhsin became familiar with this, with these discussions and debates and the discourse about um, not not primarily Sunni Shia, but it's bigger than that. These um, khurafat and shirkia that um, Shiism or the uh, or the, the shirkia, exactly. These shirkiyah that are, or to this very day, are attributed to the Ahl Bayt. Yes. Bismillah. Is that right? Is that right? So, after this, we have a little bit of 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 a little که کم کم ما متمایل شدیم به این عقیده و اگر هم ما میخواستیم دست بکشیم نمیتونیم چون اگه بخوایی شما از این عقای دست بکشید در واقع باید از قرآن عقب نشینی کنی از قرآن بده این کنار و این ام. این اساس فاندیشن عقاید پدر بزرگ من آقای علامه برقی قرآن بود yes. و آخوزیسی که موافق با قرآن نه no. so he says um... It's because uh, this is a good point you mentioned because some people want to portray Burghi as, as if it was a Quranist and stuff. No. No. As I said, in one of his lectures, he even mentions that to follow the Quran, Sunnah, according to the understanding of the Salaf. And he had no access to all of these things, to all the books of the Sunnah and whatnot back then, especially pre internet times. But Bur Mahsin says that his grandfather believed in the Quran and in the Sunnah. The Sunnah that agrees with the Quran. Yani he was very sensitive, basically, when it came to Khurafat and Shirkiyat and stuff like that. And um, yeah, he was preaching this regularly for over 20 years. And Burghi um, and, and Muhsin, his grandson, he was nurtured and he was he, he was raised in such an environment. Yani, Muhsin John, Yani, Shumat, Bachigi, as Kudaki. 
بلکه از از از, از تولدتون به بعد در همین در در سن بلوغ دیگه من اصلا از از کنار شیعه رد شدم و اصلا به داخل شیعه نرفتم درست درسته ولی میگم از بچگی اصلا شما مواجه شدید با چیز یعنی دعوت به توحید و دعوت توحید و دعوت ضد خرافات و دعوت ضد شرکت و اوهام و توسل به غیر خدا و این امامزاده ها و دور و برای این امامزاده ها وقتی که من امامزاده ها میرفتم یک نگاه دیگه ای داشتم چون که تا آیات قرآنی که میخونی آدم می با چاشتان میشه میده که غیرت خدا رو شما نمی اجازه نداری بخونی و این سبب میده که شما وقتی دو این امامزاده ها میری به یک دیدگاه... نگاه دیگه ای بهشون میکنی به این نگاه میکنی که خب یک ساختومی درست شده یه ذریعه تلاهایی گمت تلاهایی درست شده مردم مردم به عنوان یک یک فقرها خودشونو میدونن در مقابل این ساختمان و این تشکیلات ولی همش پوچه هیچ چیزی درش وجود نداره اگه اجازه بدید he says that yes so he was raised in this environment because his grandfather's body was already left Shiism he was preaching to and he was he was refuting the essence of Shiism Imamism and Mahdawism much more um, the issues of calling upon other than Allah He was very firm on this burqi. So Mohsen from young age was exposed to this. So when he reached puberty, Mohsen, he, he, from the get-go, he, he never accepted Trumpism, alhamdulillah. And when he saw other Iranians, um, because obviously they lived in Tehran, is a, the vast majority of people are Trumpers. Um, although today the vast majority of people are semi-agnostic, agnostics and semi-atheists because of the, thanks to the Shia clergy. But back then, at least, he says, when he saw people invoking, beseeching, like Catholics, exactly like Catholics, when they were invoking the imams, and there's not just imams in Iran, by the way, Mohsen mentions beautifully, Imam Zadeh. Imam Zadeh are these the sons and the descendants of the imams. Thousands of them, you know, like mushrooms. Every day there is a new one, somewhere in Iraq and Iran. Uh, idols, idols in the name of the Ahl Bayt and the descendants, where our other than Allah is directly worshipped under the pretext, as Muhsin beautifully said, tawassal and not. It's not, not tawassal what they do. Tawassal is to say, Ya Allah, by my love, for my love, through my love of your Prophet and Al-Bayt, forgive me. That's tawassal. Muhsin says, no, these people, they used to, and as we know, they directly pray to the imams and saints, exactly like Catholics pray to the saints. And he said, I just looked at these people, um, you know, he, he felt pity for them and sorry, because um, he... Alhamdulillah, he had a correct understanding. He knew that these people, they are buried. They are in need of our dua. And they are muhtajun. They are in need. They are needy. They need our dua. They need us to make tarahum. They are not delivery boys who we call upon, you know, in, in several languages, 24-7 a day, and they have no rest, and we ask them for our needs. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, پس از اون دیگه اینشون که کتاب هاشو مشغول می شد که چاپ کنه من یکی آه. از افرادی بودم یعنی یکی از اف... فرد ثابتی بودم که کتاب هایشون رو می بردم به چاپ کنه های نزدیک بازار برای... زمان شاید پا چاپ می شد؟ بله بله بعد آه. کتاب ها رو بیشون در چاپ کنه که می بردیم اونا می چیندن حروف هاشو بعد می آوردیم منزل ایشون تصیح می کرد <تصفيق> بعد دوباره برمیگشتیم پیش که چاپ خونه چی همه قلطاش ایشون که گرفت چاپ <تصفيق> میشد مثلا کتاب تابشی از قرآن خوب یادمه <تصفيق> کتاب احکام از قرآن خوب یادمه به کاغذ کایی چاپ کردیم و کتاب های خوناگونی چند سالتون بود اون موقع تقریبا مثلا کمک میکردی؟ چون زهیف ده سالم بود دیگه به دائما همش پای چای پای پدر بزرگ چند سالشون بود اون حدودا اون موقع؟ اون موقع فکر کنم چهل و هفت سالشون بود فکر کنم ماشاءالله اجازه بدید این ترجمه کنم ویت من ممبر حسن احکم قلوم قرآن was a translation of the book that Imam Shafi wrote so ماشاءالله از این نوع that when his um, grandfather was around in his mid 40s or late 40s Mohsen was in his uh, te- mid te- he was teens, he was like 15, 16. And subhanAllah, from, uh, from this age on, um, Mohsen used to support his grandfather in his dawah. I told you guys this, we are not Shahists, we are not monarchists. But um, during the time of the Shah, there was 
there was some relative freedom. At least the Shah was at least not anti-Sunni. He didn't go around and kill Sunnis in Syria, you know, and he did not support any yani Bashar Assad, at least, the Zendiq and the enemy of Islam. He says during the time of the Shah, there was some, some, some relative freedom, and we, we went and printed the books of Burghay. Burghay, a very educated man, um, fluent in Arabic and in Farsi, he, he cross checked, and you know, his, the, the, the print and everything. And then he said, and then we distributed that. And one of these books he remembers well is called Ahkam al Quran which is a translation of one of the works of Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah. So you see, this is Burqi. He translated books of Imam Shafi'i. He, um, he praised Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. So this person was beyond calling him any titles, giving him titles of Salafi Sunni. He was closer to authentic Islam, inshallah, than many people who claim it. Um, Islam and Ahl Sunnah and the straight path. Now, Badish, um, um, in Pedaritun ke Pedar Bozurgitun, Mosajan, you know, take it out of Boris Tobat Nakardim. Chancellish food. Chancellish food. How old was your grandfather? And why? What was the main thing that turned Burqi to leave Shizim? And because I know that he used, he started refuting his own books that he previously wrote. So my Yoname Burqi, that, uh, that you know, I should hold them, okay, Zamonike, one old doctor Yoname, Zamonike, uh, Tashairo Tarkat, Shia Gariro, Ahun Gariro. کتاب های سابق رو خودش رو شروع کرد رد کنه دقیقا ایشون یه کتابی نوشته بود به نام سبب اساسی چی چرا س... به شما 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 دیگه اساسی شما میگم ایشون بله. کتابی نوشته بود یکی از کتاب های بسیار مهمش که آخونده هنوز هم که هنوزه میگن در مدارس فیضیه میتونیم ازش استفاده کنیم به نام کتاب عقل و دین که دفاع هم. از تشیع کرده بود و خیلی مردم تشیع و آخوندای تشیع و خوشحال و خندان بودن <تصفيق> بعد ایشون وقتی که مراجعه کرد به قرآن و آیات بسیار, م... بسیار محکمی که غیر خدا رو نخونین از غیر خدا کمک نخواهیم به بکی... غیر خدا امیدوار نشیم هم. بعد ایشون شروع کردن عقل, دی... عقل دین جلد دوم رد کتاب عقل دین هم <تصفيق> <laughs> Allah Akbar. It's just something you can do. Quran. He says he wrote one. His his grandfather. There's one book that you can still find in the Hausat in Qom and elsewhere. It's a book called Aql Vadin, the intellect and the religion. And the Shia clergy like this book because it's kind of in. It is in the fence of of uh, of Shiism. It's in the fence of Imamism, Shiism. And but the funny thing is <laughs> that when Burqai researched and Alhamdulillah when he was guided and when he Oh, subhanAllah, imagine at that time, when he came to the conclusion that these exaggerations about the Ahl Bayt are anything but, but based on the intellect, in a second edition or part of his book, he refuted his own book. He refuted the book um, and the intellect and religion, which was in defense of Shiism. He basically, there was a time where he started refuting his own books. And uh, Mohsen says that one of the, the main things that turned him away from Shiism eventually was when he reflected and researched and understood that calling upon other than Allah, besieging other than Allah, and all these exaggerations about Ahl Bayt, they are from the evil matters. They can't be the madhab of Ahl Bayt. Hope, Mohsen Jan, and yes, Sali Dura Mohsen. I've got an important question. I've got an important question for Mohsen. Because Burqa did not just write in refutation of, of, of calling upon other than Allah and Ghulu. Because we have some Shia brothers, they have left Ghulu, but they still believe in Imamah. Not understanding that the imama is the mother of all evil. Mohsen John, my bad is Baron and Shia Dorim, Belafaster Harb Alon, Helioshu, Horafot, Shia Gariu Tarkardan, Barim Umul Horafot, Beshmigam, Umul Horafot, Asle Pazie, Emomatro, Hanus Tarnakaran, Besh Chang Mizanan, Chimiguan, Miguanke, Miganke, Hopna, Rere Hodor Hunan, Boran Galate, Va Alion Valio Logo, and Boran as Bit Atis Safavios, Vanemigan Zanjir Zanan, Sinez and Hame Nobita. ولی ولی امامت ثابته ولی پدر بزرگ شما حتی ربیه نوشت در این خود مسئله امامت و ولی کتابی نوشته نصوص امامت نصوص امامت دیدی که شما باید از توی قرآن استدلال بیاری که آیا این امام های که اینها برش اصرار میورزند که اینها به هم وصل بودن مثل پادشاهان که پسر به پدر پسر به پدر مثل پادشاهان ایرانی و... بله بیراسیه ادیان ما بیراسیه یا اینکه 
اسم اسم میرسه یا اینکه دین مستقل به خودش الیوم اکمن تو نکم دین کن و اکمن تو نعمته یعنی خدا پیامبر و فرستاد دینش هم تکمیل کرد و پیامبر رفت دیگه بعد از پیغمبر نمیخواد چیزی تکمیل بشه ناقص باشه و این استدلال رو در واقع میارن که این امامت به چسب کنیم به این اسلام زیاد ضروری نیست چون شما میتونه امام رو دوست دارید جا ما امام داریم امام مسجد سر خیابونمون امام مسجد مسجد مدینه منوره است امام مکه است ولی اینها اینها ربطی به خود اسلام نه اسلام تکمیل سلیم به دست مسلمان رسیده ما رو روزی صد هزار تا امام داریم صد هزار تاشون هم میمیرن ما اونها ربطی به خود اسلام نداره Um, Mohsen says that indeed his grandfather, he did not just wage war against the obvious khurafat and zandaqat and heresies of 12ism, imamism, rafidism. <laughs> that, that, that was a, that's a no-brainer. That was a no-brainer to his grandfather to refute. He, he even has books in refutation of grave, uh, exaggerated grave veneration, calling upon the imams, a book in refutation of the book of evil called Mafatih al-Jinan, Mafatih al-Jahim, the book to the hellfires, the keys to the hellfires. where there's tons of, for every multiplication where they invoke Allah alone, there's tons where they invoke other than Allah directly. He says, no, his grandfather also wrote a, a book, a whole book at least, one, in refutation of the very essence of Shiism, which is the mother of all evil. All these other things are branches. Yes, shirk is worse than imama. But where does this shirk come from? It comes from this gulu, this claim that there are 12 prophet-esque, prophet-like successes after the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who have not just the qualities of the prophets, but they're in fact superior than prophets, except our prophet. And that's, of course, we know it's only lip service. Everything revolves around Ali and his uh, descendants. He says his father, his grandfather, sorry, in his book, in refutation of Imama, refuted this concept. He said this has no Quranic origin. Forget about the names are not in the Quran and stuff. No, 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 we don't want any details. The concept that after the, 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 the he mentioned the ayah about the, the completeness of Islam, after Islam was completed, There is no such a thing that Abu Bakr or Umar or Ali or Sahaba or Ahl Bid or anybody is an infallible guide. There's no such a thing. So, subhanAllah. Yeah. And again, of course, this book as well. What this book as well? Every single book of his has not been translated yet. Arz kardam, Mohsin John. In kitab yekisho mozek kardi, bari yekita boke mruzek shode. Yekisho nam mota asifane be zabane انگلیسی چه برسه به فرانسوی و آلمانی و غیره هنوز ترجمه نشده که باید بشه انشاء الله یک سوالی دارم شما الان فعالیت, ش... فعالیت شما چیست شما یه وبسایتی دارید به نام بورسایی و... اینو اگر توضیح بدید I'm asking him now what, what are his activities now there is a website called burqay.com but it's only in Arabic and Farsi as far as I know اگر این رو هم توضیح بدید شرح بدید بخوام ما فعالیت اون اینه که تمام کتب علامه برقی برخون و استاد تبا طب رو به هر شکلی که هست در آمازون و صفحه اینترنتی بذاریم چون مردم نمیدونن که چنین عقایدی هست مردم چشمشون وای کردن یه حوزه علمی قوم دیدن یک مشهد رو میبینن یه شاچراغ شیراز میبینن فکر کنن این اسلامه از این اسلام اصلا خبر ندارن میچرا و اونایی هم که از اسلام فرار میکنن اصلا نمیدونستن اسلام چی هست که آره میخوان ازش فرار کنن برای همین کار من یعنی صرفا اینه که کتب این این اشخاص دو شخص رو منتشر کنم تا مردم بخونم و بفهمن که بابا اسلام اصلا چیزی که ازش ساختن یه شبه اون شبه نیست شما وقتی, شما وقتی که در شمران هستیم پل تجیش شمران آب زلال از توی این رودخانه میاد میبینی لذت میبری وقتی که میای جنوب شهر میرسی از بوی گندش میزنی بغلش رد شد داستان ما اینه درسته درسته اجازه میدید یه تاشه کنم محسن says um, he has also a very good sense beautiful sense of humor he says that um, currently there's a website um, Arab speaking brothers and sisters and um, Persian speaking brothers and sisters type it right now B-O-B-O-R-Q-E-I dot com um, is running the website all the books of Burqay I think most of his books and uh, in Persian I think all the books and in Arabic most of his books and pictures and pictures and audio files I think yes 
and a website even to another Akshia named Ustad Hajar Ali Qalandar, another from Qom, former Tawish scholar, who also wrote the book in Recitation of Imama. The website is up, running, but it's also only in Arabic and English, and his aim is to have all books of Turkey and his student, Mustafa Tabatabai, who currently lives in Tehran, under house arrest. Um, the aim is to translate all of these books. I believe it's enough that these books are initially translated into the English language and then they can be translated in other languages as well. But it, 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 of utmost importance is the English language. So he said this is his, his, his um, aim. And he gave a very beautiful <laughs> analogy. He said, Tehran is, Tehran is a very beautiful part. Um, I don't want to praise too much the area where I'm from. But Shemiran, Shemiran is an area in North Tehran with very good... Uh, the air is very good, the climate is good, you know? And he said, when you go there and you see the waterfalls, because there's a mountain there, he said, it's so beautiful. And then when you go to the um, south central Tehran, it's basically the ghetto of Tehran, most of it, or parts of it. He said, dirty and filthy. And he said, the people in Iran, the majority of the people in Iran, they think that these ayatollahs who can't even read a Fatiha correctly with semi-correct Tajweed, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alabin, you know? He says, the people think this is Islam. The people think that what they have seen in the last few decades is authentic Islam. Um, and of course, then the other, then either this or Daesh and terrorism and Sunni that there is, that's all they know. When they, inshallah, read the books of Burqi and these Muslihun, these reformists in the true sense, not deformists, because as we know, there's many modernists who um, also claim to be reformists, but they are deformists. He says, inshallah, the aim is to get all the books of Burqai and his students, Abu Tabai, translated, inshallah. Master John, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to say that, inshallah, those who are watching this, they can see it. If you are on YouTube, you have to support them in the same time. You have to support them in the same time. You have to support them in the same time. You have to support them in the same time. So yes, brothers and sisters, I hope I was, I did good and I was at your service. I don't know what's, uh, what is the next, uh, what is the plan now, but yes. That was like a Mukhtasar interview with the grandson, the living grandson of Ayatollah Burqai Muhsin, Abdul Muhsin Burqai, who also speaks Arabic, by the way, mashallah. He speaks Arabic, he learned Arabic. And these Ayatollahs can't speak Arabic. And Muhsin, the grandson of the Ayatollah speaks Arabic, mashallah. Sheikh <laughs> Grand. عفوا حبيبي اخي جو طيب الله شكرا ان شاء الله الله يوفقكم بالجميع الله يسلمك اخي جو and there's Anwar by the way the brothers and sisters well, you I'm not famous who I am anyway it's not important you know who's important who else is important Anwar is important who's in the room Anwar is a, a native from Ahwaz Ahwaz uh, which the Iranians call Khuzestan He's a native from the Arab uh, people of Ahwaz Khuzestan who have mass converted. And that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying, yeah? All these Wahhabi Dajis making up stuff. This is the own people. The old government has re repeatedly talked about the, 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 the spread of uh, Wahhabism. Of course, when they, whenever, uh, by the way, this is a qaida, yeah, a principle. Whenever a Rafidi or a Shia cleric says Wahhabi to someone, it's 99% you can be sure that that guy is a straight Sunni. And whenever a Rafi or a Shia cleric says, oh, this person is not a good Sunni, uh, oh, no, this person, if whenever he says there's a Wahhabi, no, there is a good Sunni. And whenever he says it's not a good Sunni, uh, so, so, sorry, whenever he says he is a good Sunni, then know that he's some Khurafi, semi, you know, grave worship or whatever. And Anwar, mashallah, brother Anwar in the room as well, he's also an Akshia from Australia, and he does now. Oh, I was enjoying Arabic. listening to you. Uh, I'm, I'm at work, but I was enjoying listening to you, Mila Rudy, and شيخ محسن خيري خيري ما فارسي مزيان خوف نيس بني خيري خوف نيس نو بروبلم نو بروبلم ما في سيا خوش حال شو نيس مزيان لا لا خوف عنه لا غير فارسي لا غير لا لا غير بيجي كم كم شغلة في شتار أو شتام مشي من شغلة إن شاء الله إن شاء الله خيري ما من الناس شو ما ما خوف ما يد بشي أوكي أوكي so brothers do you want me to stay here or what should I do continue continue let's Continue this question. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the the interview, خلاص, the interview is done. There's another, there's in there's a there's an in depth interview also on Sunnah Discourse of, on our channel, on my project. Well, not my, I, 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 I,
فکر کنم دوستانی که هستن دیگه یک ساعت و نیم من شاید خسته شده باشن بله 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 نه نه نه, نه. یعنی این مصاحبه فکر کنم به انتها رسید این خوبه بعد دیگه نمیدونم پس اگه کسی مثلا سوالی داره یا چیزی if anybody has a question or what not Well, let's Maybe open up the floor if anyone has any questions. Yeah, Otherwise, we, can, uh, we can end the recording right now. Yeah. 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 You mean ending the recording, closing the room? No, no, ending, the, like, stop recording the yeah, interview. I, and... Yeah, actually, we wanted... Uh, yeah, because, because with your permission, with your permission, guys, I had a live show today. I need to actually leave now. And shall I, I admit my part, but I need to leave now. And um, ask Allah to reward you guys, and I know you can do well without me, inshallah. I think, I hope I did my part. And with your permission, I need to leave anyway, because I need to do things, and I had a live show today. So with your permission, inshallah, I'm going to leave, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum, Thank you so much, Hassan. You're welcome.